Hey family, how you doing? This is your brother Vimeer Dees. Um, I really probably shouldn't be doing this. The ancestors have me on a pretty tight leash these days because they want me doing other things. Um, but I wanted to say a word here today about Renoko Rashidi. The great elder passed away not too long ago. And it's quite funny to me um, that I I just heard of him um, over, uh, you know, I think it was about five, six years back. And I'm not here to really talk about his influence on me because if truth is to be told... Um, I listened to some of what he had to say, uh, but it wasn't as if I was studying him. What I want to talk about briefly today is the meaning. When I first was introduced to, for better or worse, what could be called the consciousness community, or the idea of the consciousness community, I approached it like I approach everything else, very open-mindedly. And I was communicating with another elder whose name, um, you know, I'm not going to drop because it's not important. Um, this person is known. Uh, I like his work. In fact, I love a lot of his work. Um, there's aspects that I disagree with. There's aspects that I like, but whatever. Um, but I was communicating with him. And I was a bit naive at the time. Um, so, basically, anything that the ancestors showed me, I'd tell them. Um, that was, re that was um, relevant to whatever it was that we were talking about. Well, one day he posts on his Facebook page that the elder, Dr. Ben, had passed away. And I remember this like it was yesterday. Got home from, from work. I was working overnights then. It was snowing a lot, or at least just had snowed a lot. And um, I was I sat there on a little phone that I had, read what he had posted, and typed back a message. And the message went this way. It described a vision that I had of Dr. Ben sitting in his nursing home room and John Hendrick Clark coming to the door looking in on him and saying to him you know it's time to go you know grab your stuff let's go and I recounted that to him and for me to show you how I have lived with this stuff my whole life it was just a th it, it was like nothing. I just wrote it out, boom, 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 let it go. And I can't remember how long it was after that. I know it wasn't that long after it that somebody wrote me a message, and they were like, "Do you think that really happened? What you described there, or were you just making that up?" And I said to them. I saw it. So I believe it really happened. Or else I wouldn't have saw it. And the person said to me, but how do you know that you didn't just make it up? You know, that you didn't want it to be. And I said, because I, I had no intention behind it. I just saw it. And so is... A lot of what I see. 
my intention is not necessarily to see it, I just see it. Because it happens, some subject flashes in front of my eyes. Now you would think after a story like that, that I'm about to go into a vision for now, right? Well, sort of. After, um, Dick Gregory died. I was having a, I was having a moment where I was about I was gonna I was trying to figure out how to address him. After Dick Gregory died, I knew that there was a plan behind his his removal from this plane. The same thing was true with Dr. Francis Chris Wilson. See, I wanted to say Baba Dick Gregory, but apparently he doesn't care. <laughs> his energy is quite uh, enlivening. But I knew there were plans for their removals, meaning the reason why they were removed was because they could do more good on the other side than they could here. For instance, Dr. Frances Cross Welsing, if she had been at the mental capacity that she was in in the 80s and the 90s, she would have been a huge asset to us as we moved through the Trump years and into this terrible decade that we're entering but as her mental capacity and agility had declined significantly obviously due to age um it was thought that she was better off on the other side the same goes with her protege um there's going to be a lot of soul healing that's needed and i think that's what they're going to be attending to the same thing is true for baba dick gregory and a host of other people who have transitioned over the last two three years including the warrior, Chadwick Bowman, who was a warrior, I mean a real space warrior type dude from the other side. The same is true with our brother, Rashidi, our elder. Think about the trek of a god who falls to earth and forgets who he is. Or, even more deliberate, gives up who he is to live amongst mortals. To see how far his children have come. And then think about that God who has given up being a God to be mortal. Doesn't even remember that he's a God. Think about a determination when that mortal is 60 something of the fate that mankind has chosen for the entire human stock. And having to deal with that. And then being told, well, you know, there's something you can do about it. But in order to do it, you gotta come home. The Great Council, ladies and gentlemen, is gathering. The Great Council is gathering. It wasn't planned, but it's happening. And it's happening because events dictate it. Mankind is on a terrible collision course with history and destiny and destruction that could shut down Earth for oncoming millennia. Something that only a few of the millions of advanced souls ever dreamt as being possible at the onset of this current epoch. The council is convening.
In fact, they've already convened to figure out what is to be done with this planet and what is to be done after the great disaster. There's some question on whether or not the disaster can be headed off. Brother Renoko, the elder. I apologize, I keep switching him up. Because his energy is very familiar to me. As an emissary, a divine emissary on this planet, I, I said God, which is not really an appropriate connection to a person like him. As a divine emissary to this planet, as he was, as many wore of his generation, he was called home to execute whatever plans are to be executed after the Great Council convenes later on this year. Early next year, depends. He's part of a band of people, spirits, that if I can use some business-like terminology here, kind of sets the agenda for what we would think of as soul groups. And it's all hands on deck. Mankind has moved the human stock into such a place that one of two things is going to do it in. The massive war that mankind is hurtling towards before the end of this decade, which will so pollute this planet, it may kill off the, hum the human stock by mid-century if not later a little bit later or a climate catastrophe the likes of which hasn't been seen ever by human eyes they're trying to figure out if they can salvage this thing there's a generational push to realign the planet and Mother Earth is ready to respond if we're ready to act. But she's only given us a specific amount of time to do what's right. This pandemic has all the trademarks of a last ditch effort to prevent humanity from destroying itself. At the same time, the arrogance of the wealthy during this period of time has all of the trademarks of a civilization about to go into self-destructive mode. Wouldn't it be fitting that the wealthiest people in this country and on this planet after doing so much damage for what is likely multiple lifetimes spanning thousands of years always in the same position always in the same position that now they're trying to exit stage left they're trying to get out via space after they've done so much damage here not only are they trying to leave but in order to stay what's their answer move all of the polluting industries to space Really? Do you think it will be a long time before they also say, let's move 
all of the poor people to space. If they can pull it off. We've come to a terrifying crossroads, family. The terrible, the most terrifying part about it is that the infiltration into our community of their diseased thinking has rendered us, in many instances, impotent. Our power sapped so that we cannot play the position of savior to this planetary body again. Mumble rap is a literal expression of their mentality. I mean it. The mankind strain, mumble rap, is what they hear. And you know how I learned this? The ancestors have me listening to a lot of different music that I normally don't listen to. And in the middle of a mumble rap song, the ancestors whispered to me. They made the connections, and I saw them in one instance. I saw them. And I realized, oh, they're right. This is the way that the diseased, mankind-strained European thinks all the time. It's also the way that the diseased, mankind string, black, red, yellow, all of them think. It's selfish, it's material oriented, it's utilitarian, it is destructive. The elder went home to try and help us survive what is coming. Will he be able to do it? Who knows? But it really is all hands on deck. The saddest part of all this for me is that the black church which should be at the forefront of molding this planet towards a more egalitarian, ecumenical stage, isn't. I've been listening to a lot of gospel music lately, a lot of new stuff, a lot of stuff that has come out over the last 30, 40 years. And it makes me shake my head and tap my feet. But I notice, because I started off years ago listening to white Christian music, and there is a difference, significant difference. I notice the black gospel music has adopted many of the same tones and themes of the white Christian music. I have no problem with that per se. What I have a problem with is that the undertoning of the, of the songs are either submissive or Dominionist. And that ain't where we're supposed to be at. That's not where we're supposed to be at. We're supposed to be redefining this thing. And rebuilding the church. And yet we ain't doing that. And we're not doing it. 
because we want to be accepted in white circles. Most of the circles that these preachers are trying to be accepted into are circles that are leading this country into hell and this world right along with it. I think I mentioned in an earlier video, if not, I apologize. The reason this country is called the United States, this is a Moorish creation. creation. This is a Moorish creation. This is something that was conceived of on the ancestral realm. It was supposed to be an Eden on earth which would have opened up new doorways. Dr. King talked about this in his Beyond Vietnam speech. It was called the United States because it was supposed to be representative of all of the people on the planet. That's why it was called the United States. Moreover, it was going to act as a knot K-N-O-T between this realm and the upper realms and the lower realms. That is why it is called the United States. As the United States goes, so goes the world. Africa may have the potential to replace the United States. I've spoken of this many times. But its potential may be wasted by this country. Africa will not become the United States by moving a bunch of Europeans to its soil, although if we do avert catastrophe with this war, right now it seems like we may, and I'm hoping the war doesn't come, but astrologically the planets are there for the next 10, uh, ten years for major world conflict. In, met in multiple regions throughout the world. But if we do, and I believe we will, how Africa will become the new United States is first by unifying most of, if not all, of the continent. And then by accepting in the southern states of the United States into its commonwealth, which it will do. That commonwealth, as I've mentioned before, will expand throughout the United States until most of it, if not all of it, becomes part of that African commonwealth. If the planet is still viable by then, at least on these shores. Because Africa is going to be fine for quite some time if they would build up their infrastructure and stop worrying about this devil's maze called the uh, international finance system. But also by admitting a part of Europe into its territorial reach. Um, and then part of uh, either Japan or China. And its secret crossways will be what allows it to claim that mantle of U.S. or of United States. But if Africa doesn't rise to the challenge, somebody else may. But it should be Africa. Because if anyone else does attempt to, um, it's going to be a bigger uphill climb than if Africa was. And Africa's already going to have an uphill climb. So our, our elder has gone home. 
to preside over some of this work. Note this, ladies and gentlemen. This virus is going to get worse. It's going to kill more people. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of more people before it's done. And by the time it's done, it will be done. For a while. But it sent a message. Mother Nature is not to be trampled with. She will find ways to destroy us before she will let us destroy her. We better get to work on rehabbing her and doing it quickly. I want to note here that white people, especially those in power, have already made a decision about this. And their decision is they don't give a damn. That's their decision. We have to make another decision. I hope this video finds you well. I know it's been a while. Um, I do actually have other videos to post. I've just been... The plantation has been hard this summer. Um, so, I apologize. But, um, everybody do me a favor and please go and check out the channel uh, Dr. Oba Tashaka. Um, Dr. O-B-A T apostrophe S H a K A, Dr. Obadashaka. Um, I I'm watching his channel just about every day now. Just brilliant stuff. So check it out, especially his three-part series on the Anu. Um, really, all of his videos are pretty damn good. So check it out. Questions, comments, concerns, guys, leave it below. Anything else? One second. Yeah, question, comments, concerns, leave it below. I'm your brother, Vyamir Dees. Peace.